I'm Stan Williams, a senior solution engineer. Uh, and part of the reason I was hired at Sauce Labs is that I was a software developer for about 20 years, which means I've committed thousands of bugs to production, usually on Friday nights. What I want to show you today is how to get started with Sauce Labs. Today's theme, of course, is test automation, but I'm going to start by showing you manual tests in the Sauce environment because this journey that we're all on is transferring from manual tests to the automated world. So we're first gonna take a quick look at what we offer in terms of different platforms. We're gonna run a manual test. We're gonna then look at some test results in the Sauce Labs UI. And then we're gonna run an automated suite of tests across about three dozen platforms all at the same time. So right now I'm gonna share my screen. Uh, what you're looking at here is the getting started panel of the Sauce Labs UI. This is a series of sections which will help you download uh, automated test frameworks uh, from the Sauce Labs GitHub and implement them in your environment. There are also tips here on best practices and what the smartest way is to move from where you are to where you need to be. For example, we can show you uh, test automation frameworks using Java, using Python, uh, WebDriver IO and many other frameworks. On the left hand side here where all our options are, I've just clicked onto the live session. Live is what we call manual testing at Sauce Labs. So I'm selecting cross browser on the left. But what this loads up is the screen where you first configure your VM for a manual test. So let's take a second there. Every test that runs on Sauce Labs Virtual Cloud, that is our desktop environments and our emulated mobile environments, each test is running on a VM. So on this page, we're configuring the operating system and the browser versions for that VM. You can see I've set it to go to saucedemo.com uh, when this browser test spins up. And uh, one thing I like to do, I'm scrolling right now, uh, in this panel in the middle through the Chrome options. As you can see, there are dozens of versions of Chrome. All of the major browsers are releasing new versions about every 40 to 45 days. And while this screen is a good indication of the different platforms we offer, it's also something to keep in mind if you're considering maintaining a Selenium grid yourself. With that kind of release schedule, your testers end up maintaining the testing environments more than they test. I think we get that. I'm going to select Chrome 83. The bottom here, I've got multiple operating system options. I'm going to select Windows 10. Uh, moving over to the right, let's get a bigger resolution set. And then one more thing before I start the VM. Up at this box here, I have the option for a Sauce Connect proxy. We're not going to do that today, but this is how Sauce Labs can enable you to run tests on our infrastructure against QA versions of your site that may be behind a firewall. So we do have the ability to do that. Configured, I'm gonna go ahead and start the session. So what we're seeing on the screen now is the VM being created. It's a single use VM that spins into existence just to run your test. On that VM are the operating system, the browser, and the Selenium server, which is going to accept the commands. If this were an automated test, those commands would be coming from a Selenium script. Because it's a manual test, they're going to come from me. And all I am testing here is uh, whether I can still log in after a change to the code. It's a particularly important user experience test that I think we've all run many times. Click login. Yeah, everything still works there. Uh, as you notice, interacting with the VM is fast. Uh, it's just like uh, working on your own machine in front of you. There are a couple of things in this manual test view that I want to show you. So on the right-hand side of the screen, notice we have a dock of options. The first one I clicked on is info. This is just a view of the selections you made on the previous screen. Uh, most of you as testers have run through a scenario where you have to manually test or even automated test changes across multiple platforms, and it's easy to forget which one you're on. So this option gives you a view of what you've chosen. The next one, this is the invite link, and this enables you to share this virtual machine session 
with another user in your organization. For example, with the developer, uh, with another uh, person sitting in QA, or perhaps with the product manager. This way you can share the user experience, which of course is the important part of what we're doing, guaranteeing that our users have a great experience. You can share that session here, and that way get past what I said for 20 years, which is <laughs> works on my machine. So if you have that experience and you know that you need to be able to show the questionable behavior across your organization, this is a good feature. Other thing I wanna show you here, you can in fact take a screenshot of a view you're seeing. So if the person is not available for a shared session, they can still see uh, in a screenshot the behavior that was called into question. I think that's about it for this manual view because we wanna move on to automating tasks. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop that session. This returns us to the Sauce Labs view. Uh, I wanna point out a couple of things. Down here in the lower left corner, you can see I'm using one out of 100 sessions. A concurrent session is a VM. This is still reflecting uh, the manual test I ran, and then it is just cleared to go back to zero. Right now, I'm clicking into the automated session. I'm bringing up the test results page. This is where we aggregate the results of automated tests. So every time a suite of automated tests is kicked off from your Jenkins server or from a shell script or otherwise, each row on this page represents one run of the test. So in this view, you get the test name, which you can specify in your code. You get this check mark, and also on the right-hand side where it says passed. This is the status of the test as determined by you. Sauce Labs doesn't populate this check mark or exclamation point for a fail on your behalf, what it, what it is, is your judgment of whether the test was successful. So you set that uh, in your test script. Uh, moving over to the right, you can see if I used a tunnel, we talked about reaching behind firewalls, that tunnel would show up here. Uh, we see the operating system, of course, and the browser. I've gone ahead and clicked into the test detail page. And on this two panel view, I've started the video that's on the left-hand side. Every time you run an automated test against Sauce Labs, you're gonna get a video of the interaction. That way, if your test shows up as a fail or you're seeing other results that are questionable and you need to review, you can watch the video to see what happened. And it's interesting and I think uh, particularly useful, the video is tied to the commands of the test itself. So on the right-hand side, let me just check how I'm doing on time here, uh, on the right-hand side, we have uh, the command log. Every time a command is executed from your Selenium script, it shows up here. For example, in this command, send keys, we were populating the login box for the username. And also, you'll notice many of these commands have this icon on the right-hand side. This is a screenshot uh, of that moment in time when we're filling in uh, the box in the form. Sauce Labs automatically takes screenshots every time that your test changes the DOM. This way you get a record, fully downloadable via API, can pull these screenshots, videos, and network uh, implementation files into your environment and move through them. So here are the commands, have logs here. Uh, these are Selenium server logs, JSON logs, and others uh, indicative of the test performance. Switch over to metadata. This is how we track the test itself. But this section at the bottom, for example, we allow you to download a HAR file, which is a great way to debug the various round trips through the network that are involved in your test loading. So um, that is a super quick look at the test details page. Let me just, yeah, I've got a couple of minutes left. I think it's important now we've looked at a manual test. We've looked at the artifacts that are created from automated test runs. Right now, I'm gonna go ahead and switch over to a code view, show you a little bit about how to point an automated test to Sauce, and then we're gonna kick off a whole bunch of tests and see them running in the Sauce environment. Let me just make that switch now. So when you are first pointing your tests to Sauce Labs, there are three things that you need to do. You need to set your Sauce Labs username in the script. You need to set your access key, which you pull from your account information in the UI. 
and you need to set the URL for your web driver session so that it's pointing to the Sauce Labs infrastructure. So these two lines highlighted in blue, I'm setting my username and access key. Uh, notice that I've actually set them in environmental variables on my machine. That's the best practice we recommend because it allows you to share your test scripts across your organization without sharing credentials. So you're not violating high trust, but you are enabling sharing those resources. A little bit further down on the same page, you can see I'm setting a variable to this on-demand.sauslabs URL. This is the URL that catches your request to spin up a test and turns it into a VM. So I'm setting it to a variable here. A little bit further down, I'm opening up a web driver session. This code is in Java, but uh, we support many languages, of course. Um, calling the URL here that I just showed you and sending in the capabilities. So let's take a quick look at those. The capabilities are where you define what you want your test VM to be able to do. I'm gonna switch over here. Uh, you can see I've got an object called desktop data provider. The short of this, I don't wanna to get too far into the weeds, is that I am setting up tests on Chrome, Firefox, Safari, and Edge. And what I'm doing is specifying the versions that I wanna call. Um, for example, on Chrome, rather than specifying by the name of the version, I'm saying I want to run the latest one and the almost latest one, and then a much earlier version here. So by doing this, you're not tying your code to numbers that are going to change. Let me go ahead and run these tests now. Switch down to the terminal window at the bottom of my screen, and what we are seeing there is feedback from Maven itself. Maven, of course, being the component library in Java, which is or orchestrating this test suite. This line says configured 35 browsers. Let's go ahead and switch over. In the lower left-hand side, you can see that, in fact, our counter has gone up to 35 out of 100. If I go into the test results view here, you can see that the tests that are in blue and have the spinny wheel next to them, these are actually processing right now. So what this test is doing is trying to log into the demo page I showed you before. Same thing that we did in a manual test, but in this case, we're running it in over three dozen configurations at the same time. That's a quick visual indication of the value of parallel testing, and it's an important thing to understand. I know that we all get that automation takes us into the future and allows tests to run without being kicked off and without being run manually. It also allows us to run those tests against every possible combination out there. The end result of that is ensuring that your users get a great experience of your website. We do mobile testing too, your native app there, because our digital properties are our first touch point with our customers. And the experience that customers, clients, and prospects have with your website and with your native apps determine how they feel about your company. That's why testing is important, and that's, of course, why you are important. Uh, the position of Sauce Labs, the reason we exist, is to make that testing easier to do on a more comprehensive basis. So I think I have finished up with a quick getting started session there. Uh, I wouldn't expect you to be able to jump in after that, but I would think you could recognize uh, the landscape and move forward from there. So thank you.